you made it solid soul here and you guys have been asking for this video for a long time what do i do when i have revenge and how can i anti-gank better what a good looking question timmy in this video i'm gonna go over some small and really game changing tips for you all so that you can actually stall for longer and maybe even farm it i've seen a lot of players over the past seven years of playing this godforsaken game and i've noticed a few things that have made people unsuccessful and successful been watching farm for years and competitive players play this game such as barak Yeet and of course our well-known ex former pro players like john liner and a havoc and i could say i picked up a few things i'd say this is really helpful if you wish to be as unpredictable as possible allowing you to stall for even longer on a point remember don't feel bad for dying in a 1v2 especially if you survived for a long time because that means the enemy team did not generate any points on said point and may have diverted more attention onto you instead of the other points the scoreboard showcasing your deaths will not determine everything and how much value you are actually generating for your team. So don't let the random console players who DM you some nasty stuff get to you. Long as you didn't go 10 deaths and try to anti-gank the entire team while your team is dead, you should be good to go. Now, as you guys all know, I do have over 4,000 hours on this game, so my muscle memory for the things I do has taken hold already. Most of these tips will be for newer players or people who don't know the ins and outs for every facet of this game, but I'm sure you'll still be able to take away a few things from this video or share your knowledge for certain heroes down below, especially if you've already been dealing with Ferrana for the past couple of years. Would greatly appreciate it if you put down your own experiences down below and if you have any tips that would help newer players or seasoned players as well. Since I play basically every hero in the game, besides a few outliers like Nisha, I think I have a solid understanding of their potential. I honestly wanted to make a video showcasing each and every single hero's anti-ganking or stalling capabilities and go into detail or at least give a few tips, but I think the video would be fairly long and it might be about another hour sort of tier list type of video. And if you guys really want to see that type of video, then please let me know, like the video, and of course share the video so that I can see that these videos are worth doing because these videos take a long time to make and have to find the perfect clips for it. If this video can get about 3k likes, then I will do that style of video for you guys. But of course, without further ado, let's get into this. This is the revenge meter. A lot of players won't be able to notice it because you're constantly just trying to attack and get as much damage in as possible before you die because you really need to pay attention to this because 7.5 seconds is all you really have to stall those seven seconds don't mean anything when you manage to get yourself guard broken because if they wall splat you you are basically donezo characters like jane june or lawbringer who can choke you or use a long arm to even delay the process of you going to your offense will screw you over and you'll basically be dead in the next couple of seconds so keep in mind sometimes you don't need to be offensive you just need to survive yeah it's not gonna feel great when you die it never does but if you really want to win your games that's what i would do personally stalling in a 1v2 for a long period of time while generating points on another point or taking mid lane for your team this is your best play because those points that you stalled for may make and break and give you another team fight to clutch the game out first tip almost never throw someone while in revenge especially if it's a 1v3 or 1v4 there is a high chance that you will get staggered or bash hit stunned or heavy hit stunned when you release the character from your hands and you won't get any damage at all Heroes like Peacekeeper who can't deal that much damage anyways, this will be your downfall and you will take so much damage from heavies to the face. They can bash you or hit stun you in your recoveries as revenge doesn't hold any good properties besides giving a full shield that can easily be wiped away. Since Oathbreaker already exists, this makes it even more folly. Your heavies, your bashes, and your lights can be easily timed or even done accidentally to make sure that revenge is basically useless. So the most safe thing to do is if you do get a guard break, you can just follow with a heavy attack and go into your chain mix-up. A lot of heroes that do have unblockable mix-ups or any mix-ups in general that you can faint will easily just go into another light attack a zone, a target swap zone, target swap light attack, all those things to make it so that you aren't vulnerable. Constantly attacking means that you won't be able to get guard broken in your recoveries or get hit stunned. There are times in 1v2 situations where you can go for a max throw punish, especially as a lawbringer player, but if the player can time their bashes or their heavies correctly, then it's basically Joe over. When you throw someone, it is a gamble. You will get the max amount of punish, but you can also waste a lot of your revenge. Now listen up, this one is fairly helpful. If you get hit by a bash, into another bash by another enemy, you can dodge the follow-up attack from the second bash that's usually confirmed, except for Afira 
who has undodgeable heavy follow-ups or an unblockable one. If the opponents aren't synergized at that moment, you can use this to gain revenge and avoid incoming damage. I use this all the time when I'm bash stun and really helps me avoid damage. The next tip is huge hitbox heavies will help when you target swap these attacks, whether it be light attacks with really good horizontal cleave or heavies these will prove beneficial in dealing chip damage and damage if the opponent isn't paying attention. Keep one enemy on the side and one behind them. This should be your rotations for every single hero. In addition to target swapping, if you actually manage to get into your unblockable heavy by using a target swap zone of sorts and then going into your unblockable heavy finisher, if you're fighting good opponents, usually they will be able to tell that you're target swapping and the only option for them is to essentially dodge out of the way. You can then use that opportunity to target swap back to them, faint your heavy, and guard break them. This usually works on good opponents, but for people that don't understand target swapping mechanics, they will usually just counter guard break, so sometimes you just gotta let those heavies fly. But against good opponents, this will prove beneficial to you, because they don't necessarily want to option select that with a light attack or a dodge attack, because then they will potentially get light parried by one of your teammates. Now, when you manage to land a guard break, sometimes your best option is not a heavy attack because it takes so long. This goes for parries as well. If you manage to parry someone's heavy attack or a block ball attack, you can rightfully assume that their teammate is going to try to light attack you to interrupt you. And in that moment, it's your time to shine with a sweet light parry. Oh, fuck oh, yeah. I love being auto parried. Nah. Ooh, I'm a scripter. I'm a scripter. They call me John Descriptor. Ooh, get scripted with reactions. Bitch. Sometimes using a zone or a light attack is much faster and can hit multiple targets due to its larger hitbox. Not only is this incredibly important to get damage in as quickly as possible and get your recoveries back, taking the least amount of damage is vital to surviving and stalling much longer. A lot of good players, myself included, will also just go for a heavy feint and go for a parry on the next attack. A lot of people like to use light attacks or heavy attacks, and in that moment, you can use that advantage to gain more revenge by parrying their heavy attacks. Medjai and Jane June are usually great examples of this when it comes to using a zone instead of a heavy when you are able to guard break someone. The next advice I say is to target swap literally everything, especially your bash and the follow-up light that comes after it. Target swap bash is strong, including the follow-up light, as this will allow you to mostly be safe when you initiate shade offense to play defensively. This animation will be quick so most players won't expect it. It also stops people from attacking you if you actually decide to not target swap. There's characters like Griffin who can target swap their chain kick and hit the follow up heavy onto an enemy who anticipates you just finishing your move but in reality you can target swap these and make it a little bit confusing and in the end making you more unpredictable. Hitakiri, Warden, Warmonger, all those chain bash characters can essentially do the same thing. So characters that have a forward dodge bash and they are allowed to do a light attack or heavy attack afterwards, a lot of players tend to just do the light attack because they think that it's going to be confirmed and it's just our lizard brain organ, but in reality, if you do with your kick or your bash, there's some characters that don't have to go into a light attack or a heavy attack. They can utilize their zone, and if people think that's going to be a light attack, they are surely mistaken. Characters like Shaman and Kyoshin can utilize a zone after a bash, which can help them a lot, making so that they take less damage overall. Kyoshin can only utilize that zone on a confirm attack, but Shaman can do this if she misses a bash or a bite. Shaolin is probably one of the best benefactors for this because he can utilize a zone, which the animation is a little bit hard to tell, and you'll only get a light attack from parrying his zone. Plus, it has amazing hitboxes anyway, so you'll probably hit another enemy. Another small but fairly big tip is that when you do get revenge, of course, you want to kill people as fast as possible, but when you realize that you're outnumbered and your teammates are coming in to help you, you don't necessarily need to stay in the fight. Sometimes the best thing to do is to retreat and go heal. Also, you gotta protect your KD ratio, am I right? But anyways, the most important thing is to not feed Renown 
to the enemy so that they don't get their tier 3s and 4s. Revenge is a tool to stall. It's not a tool to anti-gank anymore. Anti-ganking is pretty rare, but when you do finally land the perfect anti-gank, you are incredibly satisfied. So don't be afraid to retreat because this is a team battle and this is warfare. The enemy may win the battle, but you will win the war. And the last tip, I will give you a fair warning, but I don't recommend doing this in a 1v2 that often, especially against good players, but sometimes it can prove beneficial. Guard breaking someone in a 1v2 situation can help you get revenge if those two enemies aren't synergized and get too angsty in trying to kill you or give damage. This can give you damage reduction on their follow-up attacks and allow you to gain tags to get revenge to stall for longer. Don't use this too often because you are vulnerable for certain ganks, but using this against players who aren't coordinated is your best friend. So there you have it. Those are my tips that I thought of while I was making the video and that has helped me over the past seven years of my game time. I've learned these over time and while some of these may seem fairly small, they can make a big impact over the course of the games you play. Obviously, your hero pick will either be a boon or a bane on your anti gang possibilities, which is why I recommend you watch my tier list to pick up the best carry heroes on the roster and, of course, my revenge video and why you aren't getting it. Really important, I cannot stress how important that is. Heroes like Nushia, Peacekeeper, and Shaman aren't the best anti-gankers or even stallers, so it's best to avoid them besides the top tier fashion. But heroes like Black Prior, Lawbringer, Shao Win, Magi, and other heroes, many many other heroes, they are capable of making players rage at you for being so good at target swapping heavies. What did you think of the tips and tricks, and did you know most of them already? If there's any special moves or tricks that you do for a certain hero, please let me know down below as I might make a video on each hero discussing their stalling and anti-ganking possibilities if you guys want to see it. Like the video, comment, and share if you do, and I'll make it if we get more than 3,000 likes. Thank you as always for watching, yep, be EA beautiful souls, and as always, I'll be streaming for honor and Starfield on my Twitch in the description. Bye-bye. See you later.